You're listening to an Anazal Ministries podcast. Why does Bob love Thanksgiving? Today we'll be discussing Bob's burgers and why Bob loves Thanksgiving so much. This episode is primarily for people who are familiar with the show Bob's Burgers, uh, but maybe haven't seen every episode. So we're, we're going to assume you know the characters. We're not going to explain who's who. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Systematic Ecology, episode number 16. We are the priest to the geeks. And when we say that, we, we don't really mean anything by it. Uh, by priest, we just mean mediator between the faith and culture, just like what the Bible means by it. And this isn't some kind of trap. It's not a Trojan horse kind of thing. It's just two people who really like Bob's Burgers and uh, just want to talk about it. And if you like what you're listening, head on over to patreon.com slash systematic ecology and vote with your dollar. Let us know that you enjoy what we are creating. So that way we are even more eager to give you more. And we got a lot of great content coming on there as well. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I am Joshua Knoll. I am a fourth year biblical study student at North Greenville University. And I... I wake up at three in the morning so that I can spend an extra hour either reading comic books or watching the newest episode of Doctor Who because it's on right now. Oh, nice. I, I'm i Brandon Knight and I don't wake up that early because uh, <laughs> I live in the central time zone. So that's like 2 a.m. here. Oh. Uh, but I'm, oh, I'm Brandon Knight. I am a bivocational Christian content creator and I am... I think less than five episodes away from finishing up one of my other favorite adult cartoons, Futurama. I've seen the like bulk of it, but this is the first time I've gone all the way through. Man, Futurama is great. I, yeah, yeah. It, it just this as a story, it's mm-hmm. a good story. I love the show. It it's one of my favorites. But Bob's Burgers is, I think, a close third for me. Wait, so what what are, what are your top three? So my top three would be Futurama, BoJack Horseman, and then Bob's Burgers. Ooh, BoJack. So if we're, on, we're only doing adult cartoons. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Everything gets skewed yeah. if we're going to count actual um, cartoons. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I might put. I don't know, man. It's too hard to do those three. They're 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 all three up there. Oh, I yeah. like Futurama's humor the best, but these other two, yeah. Bob's Burgers most relatable, Futurama's funniest uh, of the three to me, and then BoJack is just the most honest story. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah. Three, three very good reasons to like all three of those shows. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So today we are going to be talking about Bob's Burgers of those three shows. We're going to be talking about Bob's <laughs> Burgers specifically, and. For those of you who don't know, Thanksgiving is kind of a big deal in Bob's world in on the show of Bob's Burgers. Probably one of the few shows that like actually really focuses in on a Thanksgiving <laughs> Day special. Usually that's like a like a skip. Like some shows they focus on that, sometimes they don't they don't. Uh Bob's Burgers, that is a very important part of the season. It's the Thanksgiving Day episode. Yeah. Um you know what other show does really great Thanksgiving specials. Friends? I, I don't know. I, I'm just not a huge Friends guy. Okay. But but the, the better version of Friends, How I Met Your Mother. Okay. Okay, yeah. Those are pretty good. Bas- I feel like they're basically the same show. I just oh, happen yeah. to see How I Met Your Mother first. So, like, you know, I feel like whatever you watch first is the one you're most attached to. Probably. Yeah, that's kind of like the uh, the Office Parks and Rec argument like really i think that comes down to whichever one you watched first i do think i think i saw friends first but i do like hi much your mother more yeah they're both good though Um, all right (laughs) all right josh so uh what is bob's burgers (laughs) <laughs> for our listeners at home who are like what is this show because <laughs> honestly though honestly though when this show was coming out i was in college and i was interested in watching it but i had a lot of friends who were like don't watch it it's not funny it's it's just not that entertaining so why bother because i've heard a lot of people I, who don't even want to bother with the show 
I sincerely hope you're no longer friends with those people. Um, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I first off, it, it's one of the funniest shows out there, and it's funny for the same reason good sitcoms are funny. Okay. It is just incredibly relatable. I don't know anyone who actively watches the show who won't be like, "Oh, you watch Bob's Burgers? I'm totally so and so." You know, like that's just like that. That's what you do. <laughs> like yeah. I, I am Bob. Unless you catch me on a on an off day, sometimes I'm Gene. You know, I'm one of the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. No, I'm Bob too. Actually, uh, fun fact, listeners: Josh and I both ha- and our respective spouses have both dressed as Bob and Linda for Halloween at different Halloween occasions. <laughs> so we are totally Bob. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, he 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 did a better mustache, but I'm actually balding. So yeah, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So why do you love Bob's Burgers? Uh, I have I have a sentimental reason for why I love why I love Bob's Burgers and also just like an actual reason why I enjoy the show. So the sentimental reason is that, uh, again, going back to my wife, she was already watching the show and she loved it. This was like her favorite of the adult cartoons. Um, (laughs) And again, coming from my my college friends who were like, it's not that great. I was like, okay, whatever. So actually on our honeymoon we're at our bnb we have a little bit of downtime before dinner i turn on the tv it's on so we sit and we watched a couple episodes and i was like this show is actually really funny and really relatable i'm really enjoying myself watching it so ever since then of all the shows that we watch together bob's burgers has really become like our show this is the show that we look forward to watching together Every week, we haven't seen the newest episode. That's probably what we're going to do after this when she gets <laughs> home from work. Um, but yeah, no, this has become like our show of all the shows. The other reason why I really like Bob's Burgers, for those of you who haven't seen this show, but you maybe you've watched some of the other shows that we've talked about or Simpsons, Rick and Morty, all the other shows. One thing that stands out to me about Bob's Burgers that is different from all the other ones it follows a lot of the usual tropes that adult cartoons ling- lean on, except for one. And that is, let's just call it for what it is, toxic masculinity. Toxic masculinity is a hilarious feature that is seen all throughout adult cartoons. Homer's an idiot. Rick is a horrible human being. Quagmire and all the rest of the characters really on Family Guy are all just sex-driven individuals. Fry's the clueless person in the world and even like bojack bojack probably gets the like exception to the rule because they're actually exploring toxic masculinity and like the real world ramifications of being a horrible human being but when it comes to bob's burgers that's not really part of the story at all bob and linda they're not perfect their children aren't perfect it definitely has that simpsons feel of like what? Well, Louise might be. Louis? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> they kind of have that Simpsons family dynamic of, oh, the family's in a situation. How are they going to come together? But Bob and Linda, they're actually really good parents. Bob is actually a pretty good guy. Like, for those of you who haven't seen the show, he has a burger shack. But, like, Bob creates really good burgers. He has a burger of the day every day that he's got like all these fancy ingredients and fresh ingredients into the burger. He loves to cook. He's a hard worker. It's just kind of a situation of like they're down on their luck type of thing. So that's very refreshing to me that like Bob's not an idiot. Bob's not a horrible human being. He's trying his best. Same with Linda. Yeah. They're, they're honestly oddly normal for, for like a, for like a family and an adult cartoon. You're like, wow, these are, people are pretty on point. Yeah. I, Although, um, did you know that in the uh, the original pilot episode, there was supposed to be like a, like a really weird twist to the show? Did you know about this? No. So in the original pilot, two things. One, Tina's a guy. So Tina is like a college no. age person. And no. two, there. Yeah, no, no. Prefer Tina the way that she is. Um, and two, there was supposed to be human flesh in the meat. Do you remember? It's like one of the first oh, couple uh, episodes. Yeah they, that, I, yeah, they do an episode that's like. Right. Okay. But so it's like a nod at that. 
Yes, in the original pilot, that was actually supposed to be part of the story. I'm but glad it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, because it it re- they really did the ma- the right decision of settling into we're a normal family. That's just yeah. kind of a normal I, middle class family. Yeah, I um, yeah, no, they they do that really well. And and uh, one one thing also that I like, and, and this is going to be the like probably the most stereotypical Christian thing I've said on this show, you know, Christian thing I've said on this show, but right. I, I, I love that. It's not just unnecessarily vulgar. Like I yes. can, I can handle shows doing things that I don't believe in characters being mm-hmm. awful people. Oh, that, like I can handle that. Sure. I can handle strong language, but man, it, it's nice when a show doesn't rely on that. Yes. Um, like, I'll be honest. There's some episodes of South Park that I think are great and really thought provoking. Okay. Um, but then they have episodes where you're like, the entire point of this was literally just the shock factor. And I'm like, that's yeah. stupid. Like, yeah. it's not even that I'm like offended. It's just that that's not valuable entertainment to me. Like, I didn't get anything out of this. Same thing with Family Guy to me. I'm like, mm-hmm. sometimes the entire point was just uh, just to, to be that way. Whereas this show, it includes that kind of humor mm-hmm. when it comes up. But it's never mm-hmm. the point. Yeah, no, I'm glad you said that because that is also one of the other reasons why I like this show. I like get you by surprise stuff. I do. But there's two ways of doing that. And one of them is Gene just saying the most ridiculous <laughs> things. Oh, and the other, the other way is what you were talking about. It's, you know, the humor that you see in South Park and Rick and Morty and these other shows. And that just doesn't appeal to me. The... I'm going to be vulgar. I'm going to be, I'm going to shock you because I can for the sake of doing it. That's why kind of going outside of like adult cartoons, I can't do Quentin Tarantino movies, man. Like he's another guy that I think would be in that category of like, he does it. He has all this violence and gore and language because he can. I don't ever take any of the stuff he does in a lot of his movies as like actual substance to the plot. Yeah. Well, and that's, um, not, not spend too much time on this, but yeah. that, that's where people don't like playing cards against humanity with me. I, <laughs> I will not pick things just because they're grotesque. Okay. But if you put something down that is grotesque, that happens to make sense and is actually funny. Cause th- that's sure. one thing that I, that, that, yeah, you know, some, you can be grotesque and funny. Yeah, it's not like it's not that it prevents you from being funny. It's that when you think that being grotesque by itself is funny, that yeah. I'm like, nah, I'm out because it, it's it's the same thing as to me. It's the same thing as young children being like, I picked my nose. Boogers are funny. Okay. They're not funny. Yeah, They're yeah, just yeah. something you have. Like okay, and yes, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I work with middle school boys at youth group, so yeah, I kind of get that. Like. Yeah, that's not funny. It's not funny. Like, grow up a little. But you can also do it in a way that is funny. And that's where Bob's Burgers really comes in, you know? Yeah. And that's one thing that's 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 fun for me is even when they do things that are just that aren't funny, but are funny, like Mm -hmm. jeans just randomly saying stuff. It is funny. Yeah. And um, and part of it is because I'm not kidding. I really am both Bob and Gene somehow. (laughs) <laughs> Most of the time, I, I'm just a little grouchy, and legitimately, before I've seen this show, I was known for my burgers, because that's just like the thing I cook oh. that everybody loves. Sweet. <laughs> and Thanksgiving has always been my favorite holiday, and I'm known for making okay. the best turkey, and I'm like, this is this is my thing. I'm a little grouchy sometimes. So I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I'm Bob. But then sometimes also, I'll just be sitting there, and I'll be like, man, wouldn't it be weird if Antlers had a fifth leg? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, what? <laughs> Like I like I do both things, so I'm mm-hmm. like I I don't understand how I'm both, and it's particularly funny when when Bob gets irritated at Gene for saying something because I'm like that is the internal conflict that I face every day, <laughs> <laughs> where I say these things and then go why 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 did you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I would say I relate to Bob because of this whole you, you see it a lot in these episodes where he's actually very sacrificial which is a very pompous thing for me to say, but like, he's always really trying (laughs) to like put the family first and like add to his own detriment at times. And at times where he doesn't get like the acknowledgement for it, 
And like I've yeah. been I've been in that situation. You've probably been in this situation. Uh, many people have been in that situation of like you're really trying to do something for other people and it bites you in the butt because everyone like turns on you because you did it that way, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And it's a lot more honest than when it happens in other shows. Um I keep going back to how I met your mother. I'm sorry. I don't know why. My brain's there today, I guess. <laughs> but like how I met your mother, I, I love it, but you know, the crotchety guy stays crotchety and the person who's going to do a sacrificial thing for somebody, it, you mm-hmm. know, makes rain happen. and does a big dance and it's like showy sure. and it's this sweet romantic thing. Whereas in real life, I feel I relate a lot more to Bob where I'm like, no, we're not going to the mall. And then the next yeah. scene is me going to the mall, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my God, Lynn, please stop. And then it just, she just keeps going. Like that's yeah. just kind of like, you know, I've literally had that where where my wife has got the Christmas tree the day after Thanksgiving. And I'm like, Len, <laughs> you, you know, and yeah. then it dies and I go get another Christmas tree. <laughs> yes, that's what us bobs that's what, do. <laughs> that's what you do. You just you take care of the family. That's what it's about. It's yeah. about taking care of the family, you know, and making sure that the kids don't get screwed by the local creepy amusement park and. Yeah. See, I don't have kids yet, so I can't like okay. I can't speak to this. But I, I do want to, as a fellow Bob, I want to see if you agree with me on this. I feel like all Bobs end up with a Linda. Like I feel like it's just like a necessary fact. I mean, my wife sings all the time ridiculous things, so <laughs> I okay, so I love Thanksgiving enough that I bring it up literally all year, just year mm-hmm. round. It's just something that's just regular conversation in this house. Okay. And as such, my wife regularly sings, kill the turkey. <laughs> yeah, my, my wife sings that yep. one. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there. Yep. yep. She sings it all and, the time. Too. Anytime one of us says thank you, that, that song <laughs> just happens. <laughs> yeah. That's another thing I like about Bob's Burgers is it's a very musical show. And it's not yeah. like and, a flashy, like, oh, th- like, uh, what's his name over at Family Guy who actually can sing really well. Like, none of these people yeah. actually sound good, but it's part of the show because <laughs> it's normal. <laughs> I love that there's a vinyl of Bob's Burger songs, and I kind of want it. <laughs> I want to get, there's a uh, cookbook. Have you seen that? There's a cookbook of yes, a lot of the burger of the days. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I want that one. Yeah, that'd be uh, great. Apparently, you, d- you don't really need the help. I- I'll take it, but... <laughs> <laughs> I I still think it'd be fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why does Thanksgiving matter so much to Bob? Why do you think it matters so much in the show? Cuz I was trying to think it, is there like, actually like an in canon explanation for this? <laughs> I don't remember one. It, it's something that's particularly interesting, right? Cuz cuz Bob is always no, we're not doing that. Not yeah. <laughs> and, and like somehow like I said, Bob's always end up with Linda's who want to sing and mm-hmm. be the life of the party and, you know, make everybody's day. And, you know, Bob just loves Thanksgiving, which is so interesting, right? Like he's mm-hmm. kind of antisocial. He's kind of crotchety. Yeah. And yet Thanksgiving, that's his jam right there. Yeah. And a lot of times in the show, Bob is what is he? He's a burger man. That's like a line that comes up a lot. <laughs> Bob is a burger man. There's a whole episode real early on, Josh. Do you remember the one where so they live in like a New Englandish town, like a Massachusetts or something like that, New Jersey type of area. And there's Lobster Fest. Do you remember this episode? There's like a Lobster Fest yes! going on. <laughs> and the kids really want to go. And Bob forbids them from going because they're a burger family. So then you have Thanksgiving, <laughs> which is all about turkey and stuffing and the cranberry sauce. And he's all in. He's making like these really fancy bougie dishes for his family. Yeah. And what's what's fun also for people who don't know all of the different types of turkeys and like all the like things that he does to prepare it is like all things that us people who are actually turkey fanatics really do think about <laughs> and i'm like man it's it's fun because this show showing us as crazy and i'm like yeah it's kind of <laughs> insane that i care this much about a single meal a year a little bit <laughs> uh, um yeah so I, I wonder do you think that it's literally just the turkey like is it just the food and bob just likes to cook or is he like secretly just enthusiastic about the spirit of being thankful I think it's a little bit of I think it's a little bit of both. Um, Like I talked about, Bob is a really good cook. 
And so, yeah, he's a burger man. But like Thanksgiving is kind of the day for a lot of people to flex some of those cooking abilities. So we get to see that from Bob on Thanksgiving of like he's really into the cooking. But I think the Bob character is kind of this like dramatic irony, this type of character of like, it seems like he really wants more out of life but he's very content with like the way that things are and his family is to the point where this is like the holiday where he can kind of like get a little bit of that of like, we're going to have a really fancy dinner and we're going to have all this crazy Turkey stuff and these fancy side dishes. The kids, they just want Mac and cheese in the end. Yeah. Like the kids are very <laughs> simple still, but I think this is what gives Bob that taste of like the life he actually does want if that makes sense i think i'm getting a little yeah. like into it on the character but i no I, I i see what you mean i think i agree with you i um you know bob bob is he's not social he wants to just have the family and it just be the family and the family to be at home he doesn't want to go out places he just wants to have the family right and this one day of year it's like i could celebrate just having the family at home <laughs> yeah so it's like yeah. yeah this is this is it this is what i wanted the whole time anyway Right. No so Teddy, I, I think, no Mort, just the family. Yeah. Yeah. Just the people that he really loves. And, you know, even though he doesn't show it in like a super emotional or whatever kind of way, I feel like him celebrating Thanksgiving is his way of showing it in a way. Um, yeah. Yeah. However, yeah. Part of it is definitely the cooking, too, though, because uh, we just did during our Friendsgiving event, we had mm -hmm. an entire marathon of Bob's Burgers Thanksgiving episodes because Hulu has where you could just click over to Thanksgiving episodes. Oh, really? Watch them in a row. Yeah, it's a crazy feature. Well, like, now I know what right else there. we will be doing this evening. It's, it's <laughs> fantastic. But uh, one of the episodes, he messes up his family's turkey and realizes, you know, he set Teddy up, but he never finished. So he's like, I can redeem myself. I'm going to go cook Thanksgiving <laughs> meal for Teddy. <laughs> he just goes over there and prepares Teddy's Thanksgiving. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, okay. So it, it is also definitely the cooking, um, which isn't. I don't feel like it takes away from it. So when we see, to get biblical on us, when we see Jesus, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when he's calling the disciples, the last one he calls is Matthew. And he's like, hey, I'm going to be at your house for dinner tonight. <laughs> he's like, I'm just yep. going to be at your table, dude. Yep. Uh, he sees Zacchaeus in the tree who's just trying to get a glimpse of him. And he says, hey, you, I'm having dinner at your house. <laughs> and then after, after he resurrects, this is one of my favorite things ever, right? He's walking down this road after he's come back from the dead. He's talking to two people. And the Bible words is so funny to me because he's talking to them. And then the line literally says, they said this. Then Jesus appeared at this person's house at the table. And I'm like, okay, so is he just like mid walk? Just boom, just pops <laughs> boom. <at> their table. <laughs> like, <laughs> what, what was that about? But <laughs> like that about? all throughout the gospels, Jesus just constantly wants to be at the table with people, wants to be eating yeah. with people. My question is, why do you think this, like the table is Jesus's go to for socializing? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting thought. You know, I also would add in there the uh, wedding feast in Canaan. Um, this yeah. is, you know, you know, Jesus, Jesus keeps the party going. You know, he turns the <laughs> wine into water, he turns the water into wine for the party. Like, there seems to be, like you said, like a significance of the coming together and sharing a meal. Like, what is one of the last big things that Jesus does before the crucifixion? is to celebrate the Passover with the disciples, having the Seder dinner together, and then initiating the new covenant through communion. Like, these are, the coming together is an important element. Sharing a meal is important in the Christian life. My college, the college I went to, is a Grace Brother in School. And for those of you who don't know that, what that is, there's very little difference between a Grace Brethren school and a Baptist church or a Methodist church by way <laughs> of theology. Very little, very little difference. One of the ways, Josh, I don't know if this has come up at all on your other podcast, but one of the ways that they are different is that for communion in a Grace Brethren church, it has three elements. It's got the bread and the juice or wine, whatever, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, foot washing, because that's something that Jesus also did that yeah. night was wash the disciples feet and they share a meal together. I come from a Baptist tradition. We eat. 
the end <laughs> like that is that's how it works yeah. it's like i i grew up baptist like we eat my small group came over and we had a pie fellowship because when you grow up baptist in november you have to get together and eat pie that's a thing for some reason like yeah, it checks out yeah it checks out <laughs> I right think that's in one of the letters paul wrote or something something <laughs> second opinions or something like that uh, yeah. um Third but Maccabees. Yeah, third, <laughs> third Maccabees. We're going to go to the Apocrypha on this one. Um, <laughs> but yeah, community is a sacred element within Christianity. And it seems that one of the examples of Jesus in the Gospels is sharing a meal is sacred. Like we think of it as like a thing that we're just supposed to do to keep our bodies going which is true. You need food to survive. <laughs> Eat. But the coming together of people, the coming together of God's people to share a meal together is an intimate, sacred thing that should not be missed. Yeah, I. So uh, of uh, on the whole church podcast, my other podcast, you mentioned like yeah. uh, we haven't we haven't talked to that particular group yet, and we should. But a lot of the groups we speak to like um, we spoke to a Mormon family once and okay. it's really interesting how a lot of the people who are, I'm trying to find it um, better at going out and going door to door and constantly talking and keeping the family in their fold, if you will, okay. are the ones who sit down and have meals. Like every time mm -hmm. we ask them, it's like, okay, so why does your group do this better than, you know, regular churches, you know, not trying to mm -hmm. demean any group, but you know, when we ask them that, and they're like, well, you know, we sit down and have a meal as a family. So the family is close. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, yeah. And, and I do think for those of us who love Thanksgiving and for those of us who have sat down and had meals with friends, like if you've gone to a friend's house and just sat down and had mm -hmm. a meal with them, like it, it is there's something about it that's ineffable. Like it is mm -hmm. it does build a certain amount of intimacy mm -hmm. um, more than going out to me. Like I feel like going out to okay. eat doesn't really do the same thing. But like if you're at someone's home and they prepared this feast, sure, and you sit down and you partake together, I don't know, a special bond occurs. I feel like, yeah. What well, I mentioned, my wife and I, we have a small group, and it's uh, us and then two other couples we meet, and we're going through a book study together. But every time we meet, we have just some type of a snack. Like I said, we had a pie fellowship recently or we had nice what are some of the other things that we've done i can't remember i know we're gonna have a hot chocolate bar here pretty soon uh i think next month we're gonna have like fancy fixings and all this stuff and i'll have like the simpsons or adventure time on just to like give everyone something to kind of like like we're bulking people into our home here so this is what our home looks like we eat garbage and we watch cartoons like this is kind of what our <laughs> house is yeah and like Already, we've only been doing this for a couple of months, but already these couples are like, we feel so much more connected and so much more at home with this group than with prior small groups and prior Bible studies that we have been a part of. So, yeah, there is something powerful about, do you want to come over and eat some food? And yeah, for like, sure, like the body of Christ is coming together, arguably even better than the body of Christ coming together on a Sunday. You know what I mean? I, I can agree with that. Cause that's where yeah. the relationships are formed. I feel like. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, as someone who loves Thanksgiving, I regularly make jokes like we should just do it once a month or something. And <laughs> honestly though, like if we did something like that, maybe not the same meal every month, but mm -hmm. if we did something like that, I, I can't imagine not feeling closer to one another. You know, like if sure. we sat down and just had those meals, like naturally you will be closer to one another. And I think that's, yeah. I, I do want to believe that's why Jesus did that. Mm -hmm. Jesus was setting an example of, hey, this isn't just something where I get up and speak to you every now and then. This is relational and this is how relationships, this is what they look like. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that was just sort of his example he said. Yeah. And this is something that I have to be like consciously aware of because we got, you know, we got a baby on the way coming in April and all the, you know, I hear all the time about like these families that like they get 37 minutes together, accumulative throughout the day. And like, obviously with a little baby, we're going to like have a lot of time together with, with child. But like after that point, as the kid grows up, like I have to be consciously aware of like, 
this is a sacred space for us to be together as a family. And we may only get this one meal together during the day, but this is like a special time for us to grow in our relationship together and with God as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So meals are only half of Thanksgiving, right? Like the Mm -hmm. other part is, is being thankful. (laughs) Sure. Uh, Which I, I do think they're, they're like, Almost like Jesus, two natures, right? There's two natures to Thanksgiving. One nature is the meal and the other nature is, is being <laughs> thankful. The and thankful it is 100% one. both. Um, mm-hmm. I, I'm i sorry. I just used the natures of Jesus as an analogy. I feel like that's weird. Anyway, um, I'm rolling with it. Checked it checked out, so. though. <laughs> <laughs> one of... <laughs> Oh, okay. One of my favorite Bible verses about being thankful, which I have a lot, because also the spirit of Thanksgiving is just one of my my favorite things to Mm -hmm. talk about. Um, I feel like the world would just be a better place. The church would be more united. All of those things if we were more thankful. Okay. Um, And one of my favorites is in the book of Zechariah. Mm. Um, So the prophet is just just gives everybody some context here. He's talking to the Israelites after exile. They're getting their country back. They're getting the temple back. But it's not as big as it used to be. It's not as cool as it used to be. And they're kind of mm. complaining. And Zechariah is given all these different analogies, and he's preaching to them. And I won't get too into the book. I could go through the whole book because it's one of my favorite books of the Bible. Nice. And I know you're not supposed to have favorites, but you know what? I do. <laughs> um, <laughs> and in Zechariah 4.10, the angel of the Lord's talking to him, and he says, Who has shown contempt or yeah, who has shown contempt for the day of small things or who would forget the day of small things? Hmm. And he's basically just saying, calling all of Israel out for not being thankful for the little things that God gave them. Hmm. Like, yeah, the temple's not as big as it used to be. Who are you not to be thankful for it though? Right? Like you could have had nothing. You were in captivity. (laughs) Right. Right. And you could (laughs) have thankful that you're not in captivity. Yeah. Right. Exactly. (laughs) So in your monthly version of Thanksgiving, sharing the meal, would you always focus on thankfulness or would you look at other maybe attributes of Christianity or of Christ that we should be highlighting more? I'm just curious. And if you don't have an answer, that's fine. Or would you always just focus on thankfulness? I think it would depend if we are, you know, meeting outside of that one meal a month. Okay. Because I, I assume we would. So those times would be for other discussions and the one time a month. I really feel like everyone needs to focus more on thankfulness and not make it a once or twice a year thing. Mm -hmm. So I'd be, I'd be comfortable with all everyone once a month saying, Hey, let's just take a whole day to just focus on this. Nice. No, I I agree. I would agree with that. I was just kind of curious. I was just kind of curious. I I might be going too far. No, no, no. I was just getting crazy. You want to be thankful all the time? What's wrong with you? No, no. Like, (laughs) no, like I I would totally agree. Like, I think. I think we would do ourselves a favor to be thankful more to uh, as a as a chapel speaker at my college said once to look for the little instances of grace, the little moments of grace that you know, we've been living in a pandemic and like things aren't great and the church isn't great, but there are still reasons to be thankful and Thanks. to take more than just once a year to reflect on that would probably do a lot of us good. Yeah. 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 So I feel like not a lot of people here can say they were in exile, but now they have a temple that they're thankful for. <laughs> um, <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> what What are some ways that you think that we, we could just talk me and you or just the mm-hmm. church as a whole. Mm-hmm. How do you think we show contempt for our leaders and for the little Ooh. blessings for our leaders and the little blessings? How do we show contempt for them? I yeah, mean, like, what, what ways probably... do we see people doing that already? <laughs> <laughs> call uh, us all out, Brandon. Call us Make all us out. feel guilty. You're all wrong. Preach You're doing conviction. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I think I think of like church leaders, it's this really weird dynamic of like on the one hand with church leaders, there's like a lot of idolization. You know, we idolize certain church leaders or like we really like, oh, this person or this preacher, or this, you know, book writer is a great person. But as soon as like one thing comes up, we're willing to throw them aside. Now, in some cases, maybe that's for a good reason. 
I think of like just the name. Mark Driscoll. (laughs) I was going to say Ravi Zacharias, actually. But, you know, that would be an example of like an extreme situation of like, okay, this actually takes some like wisdom and reflection and how we react to this. But, you know, if you just had a bad encounter with a pastor on a Sunday morning, like maybe you felt like they snuffed you or something and like didn't say hello. And you're like, I don't like the pastor anymore. Like you got to realize how much time a pastor puts in in a week to minister to a flock. And for some of you, that flock looks like multiple campuses, multiple church locations. And you got one person and an elder board trying to shepherd all of you. Like a pastor does more than just study and write a sermon during the week. Even though I think that's like the most (laughs) obvious thing. That is the most obvious part of pastoring and probably the part that most pastors enjoy the most. But like the job is so much more than just that part. And I think we need to start realizing that in order to be a little bit more thankful for how much the family, not just the pastor, but the whole family has to sacrifice in order for the ministry to continue through that pastor. Yeah, I um. I want to be a little blunt, and then if you feel like fixing it, that would that would be <laughs> great. <fine>. Um, <laughs> so many people expect their pastor to do literally everything. They don't understand the priesthood of all believers, and they oh yeah, they just you know the, it's the priesthood of the pastor, right? Mm-hmm. The pastor needs to be at every family's hospital visit. The fa- mm-hmm. pastor needs to preach every you know three times a week. If you want a house visit to talk to your son because he's being bad, he needs to come for that. And honestly, I, I'm i not going to bother talking to the people who feel like the pastor needs to be there for your hospital visit every single time. Because I don't think you're going to understand when I say he can't do that for everyone, especially if he mm-hmm. has 100, 200 people, which is sure. pretty normal, actually. Yeah, no. And, I, yeah. If you're in like a small 50 person church, that's different. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are still deacons and at least in the example in the book of Acts and in Paul's writings, the role of the deacon is to go do the physical like service of the church among the people and the elders are to do more. So the teaching side of things. So even at that, if a deacon showed up at your bedside, that's kind of okay. You know, I agree with you. I in this, uh, you talked about your podcast. I'll talk about mine. So on my Perfect. seminary life, we uh, I'm on a class right now called Discipleship Methods. And exactly what you've been saying of like, we need to get over this idea that the pastor is supposed to do everything and that we need to be equipping the body of Christ better in general and also teaching better that we have the capacity for all of us to be discipling each other. And that the pastor plays a role more of a coach. We don't have shepherds, at least in my area. We don't have shepherds. We have steel (laughs) mills. Yeah. So a better modern day example of a shepherd isn't a CEO pastor like we see in a lot of churches, but a coach, someone who's going to come alongside you and, yeah, tell you to run more wind sprints and also tell you to work on your free throws or whatever your sport may be, but they're not going to literally hold your hand and make you do those things. You still have to take the effort to do the work yourself as well. Yeah. So here's going to be the part where I'm too blunt and and you can fix it. That that wasn't the blunt part. (laughs) (laughs) No, no, no. So the blunt part is I'm not going to bother talking to the people who think the pastor needs to be there for their hospital visits because I don't think you're going to get it. Um, I'm going to talk to instead the people just the normal people who go to church who maybe understand that and maybe say a prayer for the pastor. And that's it. Mm -hmm. I was convicted a few years ago because I lived 0.2 miles from a hospital. People from my church go to that hospital and I was just letting the pastor do all of the visits. Hmm. Now, you know, not not that he shouldn't go if he can, nothing like that, but you know, I felt convicted that I was just like, that's somebody else's job. I was significantly closer to the hospital and those people in our church Mm -hmm. that were at the hospital than my pastor was. So why wasn't I taking the responsibility to see them and be there Mm -hmm. for them? And I I want to challenge just your normal lay people. Mm -hmm. You might be closer to the hospital than your pastor. You might be closer to someone at your church in need than your pastor. 
you might have more money than your pastor. You probably do, actually. Right. <laughs> um, Depending on, yeah. I, I want to challenge you to question yourself on what roles you can do to best support your leadership and maybe show thankfulness in that. Like thankfulness isn't just, you know, sitting around saying, I'm thankful for this, but saying, because I am thankful for the opportunity to minister, I'm going to this hospital that's right here and I'm going to minister because I am thankful that God's blessed me with a bonus this month. I'm going mm-hmm. to take that bonus and help someone in need that's at our church. Yeah. You know, thankfulness should always be accompanied by action. Yeah. And that's, um, and for the, I know the leadership might seem a little out of place, but that part in Zechariah, he's talking to the people because they were upset of the pastor and the, um, the governor of Israel. Okay. And he's saying those were the things that they were showing content for was leadership in the temple. Hmm. And in that verse, the angel of the Lord saying, no, 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 you've got to be thankful for all of that. So, hmm. Hey, if you don't think your pastor's doing a great job, I think God's telling you, you've got to be thankful for him. Hmm. And I think that means doing actions to help him. Same thing with okay. our government. If you don't like Joe Biden, guess what? I, I, I'm going to upset some people. You should still be thankful for him because God lets you have a leader where you're in a free country. Wow. That is astounding <laughs> compared to where you could be living. That's true. Josh, would you like a, a good example of this? <laughs> I agree Please. with what you're saying, but would you like a good example? Maybe to <laughs> Please, you up I feel a like bit. I got two real up people. So no, that's up? fine. No, but here's a here's a good personal example of how this what you're talking about has totally worked out. Um, so I'm in a very busy phase of life right now. I'm working two jobs. I work in retail, so I'm miserable right now because it's the week of Thanksgiving. Um, <laughs> I'm in school. I ha- I'm an intern with my church, and my wife is pregnant. So like. Basically, every moment of my life, and I'm on two podcasts. So, really, (laughs) there are some days where every moment of my life is like scheduled and it's work. It is physical or mental work, and I'm exhausted. And I don't know about you, Josh, but when that happens, housework starts to suffer and stuff doesn't get vacuumed or dusted and it gets gross. Out of the blue, we're at church and this woman, she's, she's friends with me and my wife, but this woman comes up to us and she says, I want to clean your house. No reason. She didn't know about, I mean, she knows how busy we are. She, she knows how busy I am. And she was like, I, I just had this on my heart. I want to bless you guys. This is a way that I know that I can bless you guys. I know this will take some stress off of Claire. And she was like, And she looked at me and she was like, and, you know, I see you as a pastor of the church here and I want to bless you in for serving the church. And I was like, intern, intern is what I am. But she was like, I I don't care. Like you're pastoring these students. So and she came over last Wednesday. I worked a double that day. I came home and my house was the cleanest I have since we moved in. And there was a Christmas snow globe as a bonus little gift for us and a sweet card from her. So that is an example to go with what Josh was saying of someone in the body of Christ who said, I want to express thankfulness. I want to use my gifts and my talents, which we're all encouraged to do. Thank you, Paul. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm going to serve someone else to say thank you for what you're doing. Man, I don't have anything to add to that. That was good. Perfect <laughs> timing, be right? Like that. Please. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that's the case, do you want to start wrapping this up then? Let's go ahead. All right, let's start wrapping this up then. Uh, Josh, do you have any recommendations for the listeners at home, either related to Bob's Burgers or otherwise? Man, um, so many great things that are Bob's Burgers related. Um, <laughs> Everyone go buy a you know, you know what? I already said mine earlier, and I'm just going to repeat it. Uh, go to Hulu. Go to Bob's Burgers. Click over to the side where it has the Thanksgiving episode list and just, you know, just watch some of those. <laughs> yeah, I think if you if you just want like an easy introductory guide, if you've never seen the show, that's a great idea. Uh, yeah. For me, I would say. If you really do love the family dynamic of Bob's Burgers and you haven't watched The Simpsons, it is different and you definitely don't get like the warm, fuzzy feelings as much as you do with Bob's Burgers. But they do happen. 
And I would say the humor is fairly similar as well. So if for some reason you have never watched The Simpsons, all 30,000 seasons are on <laughs> are on Disney Plus. Go check them out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sweet. So with that, I am Joshua Knoll. Uh, you can follow me at the Whole Church Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or just wherever you're listening to this. Just, just type it in. You'll find it. Yeah. And uh, how about you, Brandon? Where can people find you? Yeah, you can follow me personally on TikTok and Instagram at just.brandon.k. Uh, or I have my podcast, My Seminary Life. It's on most of the platforms, and you can find it on Facebook and Instagram at My Seminary Life Pod. Uh, next episode, next time on Systematic Geekology, Josh, you like thankfulness, right? So. Yeah. <laughs> Joe and I are going to be back for the Systematic Geekology Thanksgiving Day Super Spectacular. This is going to be a great episode of geeks being thankful for geeky things. It's a gr- it's going to be a great time. It's a lot of fun. And I got to say, uh, as much as we find that we disagree on things, I just want to throw out there. I agree with you about live action Powerpuff Girls. I am. Oh, do you? Excited. Ooh, there's a yeah. teaser. Oh, there you go. Great. There you go, fam. That That's a teaser teaser for the next episode. Uh, go to our website in the description to let us know what you have been geeking out on and what we should be. And remember, we are all a chosen people, a geekdom of priests. This was an Anazal Ministries podcast. If you enjoyed this show and would like to learn more about our network, be sure to check out the Anazal Ministries podcast network.